Ever since Bill Boeing began tinkering with his first flying machine in the days before World War I, the company has had but one overriding goal, to build the best aircraft humanly possible. In the beginning, Boeing's planes were built in a converted barn. Nothing fancy, but the space was adequate. As the number of orders and the size of the aircraft grew, so too did the assembly buildings. Today, Boeing makes some of the world's best and biggest commercial jetliners. Not surprisingly, Boeing has created a suitably massive nest for the birth of these gigantic birds, the Assembly Building in Everett, Washington. Hi, I'm Jeff McAtee. It's hard to grasp the enormous scale of this building just by looking at it from a distance, but believe me, it is huge. In fact, this is the largest building in the world by volume. More on that later in our program, but first, I'd like you to meet Boeing's top tour guide, Sarah Murr. She's going to take us on a, an up-close and personal tour of the Everett plant. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. Welcome to the Tour Center, Jeff. Thank you. This is where we host about 100,000 people every year. We have displays here for the visitors to look at. We have Boeing retirees that have come back and volunteer their time here at the Tour Center. They hand out the tickets, help us with logistics of the tours. First thing we do is load people in the theater. We show them a movie that's a history of the company, how to put together a 747 really, really quick. And then we put them on a bus and take them over to the factory. So let's go to the factory now. Let's All go right. get on the bus. So Sarah, how does it all start from an idea in some designer's head to get to the plant? <laughs> the engineers, um, typically you've heard the phrase, it's, it's on the drawing board. Well, today that drawing board is actually a computer. And all of the design engineers, the people that work the structure, the electrical engineers, the payloads engineers, they all work together on a common database and design the airplane in the computer. And they can do a mock-up of the airplane in the computer so that they can see where any interferences with their parts are. How has this speeded up the process from the old days of pen and paper? Drastically, because one of the major differences now is we don't have to build a physical airplane that was used as a mock-up. So basically, we built an airplane never intended to fly, was designed to make sure all the systems, the electrical wiring, the hydraulic tubing, the structure, that everything fit together. We don't have to do that anymore. That saved time and money. Three models are built here in Everett. All are wide bodies. The venerable 747, the 767, and the 777, the world's biggest twin jet. Boeing's other jetliners, the 737 and the 757, are built at the company plant in nearby Renton, Washington.
After a short bus ride, we arrive at the assembly building. At first glance, we see that the interior easily matches the gargantuan scale of the exterior. This tunnel contains all of the systems for the factory, computing cables, the telephone wiring, the wastewater, fresh water, compressed air. Look down to the other end. You want to guess how far that is? That's about a third of a mile. Well, it looks like you could uh, run a marathon in here. I mean, yes, and in running. fact, we have a lot of current Boeing employees running, and we have one gentleman who retired from Boeing over 20 years ago who continues to come back here every day and log miles going up and down the tunnel, out of the rain. To help us envision just how many wires and cables are used in the plant, Sarah shares this tidbit of trivia. If you were to stretch all the fiber optics in this building end to end, they would run 2,000 miles, roughly the distance between Seattle and San Diego. This is the largest building in the world in volume, 98 acres under one roof, or 40 hectares, 472 million cubic feet, or 14.2 million cubic meters. Okay, okay, now how do you put that in human terms? Okay. How do you relate to the size of this place? Have you and your family visited Disneyland? Yes. We could put Disneyland inside this building and still have room for 12 acres of parking. <laughs> you play basketball? Yes. 911 basketball courts could fit inside this building. We could play 74 football games inside this building all at the same time. That would really speed up the tournaments. Right. We could play them all on one day and it'd be over with for the entire season. Those of you who grumble over high heating and cooling bills might wonder how Boeing can afford to heat this place and still turn a profit. Incredibly, the answer is the building maintains a year-round temperature of 70 degrees all by itself. There are one million light bulbs in the ceiling, thousands of workers, and hundreds of pieces of equipment. Generating heat is not a problem. Plus, recirculating fans in the ceiling help move warm air back down to ground level. In summer, the cool breezes off Puget Sound help keep the building comfortable. All they have to do is open those big factory doors, which, by the way, are about the size of a football field, 300 feet wide and 120 feet high. Now this, you say it's, it's the largest building in the world by volume. Can, can you give us some, some uh, comparisons to other big buildings that we're familiar with? Cape Kennedy in Florida, it's the vertical assembly building is taller but it's not as wide, as deep, and as tall as this factory building. What about the, like the World Trade Center or, or the uh, Sears Tower or something? Once again, you've got the height, but you don't have the square footage that you have in this factory building. So if you could squash those buildings down, they still would fit inside right. this place. Right, that's exactly right. This area is what we call major assembly. We've got 1,700 suppliers from all over the world that provide us parts, and the parts also come from every one of the states in the United States. Um, the nose section comes from a Boeing facility in Wichita, Kansas, and they actually send us nine pieces that fit in two rail cars, and the train comes all the way across the state, the United States, and brings those parts for us. The fuselage comes from Northrop in California, and they also send us parts on rail cars. This first section of the airplane is really the belly. It's being built upside down so that it's easier for the workers to stand on their feet and do all this riveting that you hear in the background. Wings are assembled over in the big white structure and it's a vertical assembly process. We load all the inner parts of the wings, and then what you see, upper, lower skin panels, after the wings been joined together, in the horizontal position, we'll add engine wiring, actuators, hydraulic tubing. Is that this, this is the wing of a 747, and we're standing right on top of it right now. 
Let's try to put in perspective how big this wing really is. Yeah, I mean, from right here, it doesn't look that big. Okay. Picture in your mind a medium-sized car, like a Chevrolet or a Ford. Okay. Okay. We could put 45 of those cars on this wing area. 45 cars. And inside this wing is a fuel tank that holds 17,000 gallons of fuel. So that's eight for each wing, right? Each the, wing. The other one has just as much 17,000 gallons. And in the center of these two wings is another section that also holds about 20,000 gallons of fuel. And that's what helps this airplane fly on those long non-stop flights like San Francisco to Sydney, Australia. Now this is the part of a Boeing jet most of us are familiar with, the interior of the plane. But as you can see, there's a lot more to a 747 than meets the eye. There are about 10,000 Boeing workers that work in this factory building, and they work three shifts a day, 24 hours a day. Production work is done on first shift and second shift, and that's when we have most of the employees in the factory. So now when, a, when a, an airplane is finished, does it then roll out the door and they move the next one up? Right, it's a waterfall plane? effect. And we actually start final assembly back to the left, and everything moves from left to right. And as the airplanes get closer and closer to those big football-sized doors, they get more and more complete. So now we're able to tow the airplane on its own wheels throughout the rest of the factory. From this point back, parts are moved all over the factory with the overhead crane structure. These cranes can lift a whopping 34 tons. The crane operators sit about 90 feet off the floor, 